What's up guys? We are back to working on the Z. We are picking up right where we left off because I still have to take care of these rear wheel bearings. Now, this is gonna be a big job no matter what, but the right way to do it would be to take the whole rear knuckle and everything off, kind of like how you saw me do when I actually swapped the knuckles out to the Part Shop Max one. But I believe there is an easier and less labor intensive way to do it. And that's what I'm gonna try today because I really don't want this to take all day. My hope is that I can pull the wheel bearings out in an hour or two and then bring them to a shop. And maybe with any luck, I can get that shop to press the new ones in today. It's kind of asking for a lot because it's already like 2 p.m. and I'm sure the closest shop closes at five. But worst case, my next day off is just a few days away. So the most important thing I need to get done today is getting those wheel bearings off. That way they are ready to bring to a shop so we can get that taken care of. So let's dive straight into it. The first thing I wanna do is pull the axles out. That way we have access to the rear wheel hubs. And the first step of pulling the axles out is getting the axle nut off, which is this big 32 millimeter nut on the end of the axles. I already pulled the little cotter pin out. Now we just have to get this big bolt off. So I put the car in fourth. The idea there is you want it in a higher gear. So it puts a lot more load on everything and it should prevent the rear wheels from turning. Um, having a parking brake would help, but as you know, this car does not have a parking brake, which is something I'm hoping to fix in this whole process. So let's try and get this axle nut off. There we go. So I ended up putting the car in sixth to get that off. In fourth, it was still kind of turning over the motor. It would have been helpful to have either a working parking brake or a friend here who could put their foot on the brakes. It would have made it a lot easier. That's how I did it the last time, but whatever, we got it off. Now let's jump onto the other side. Now that we've got those axle nuts off, we can hop under the car and pull those axles out. All right, with the axles out, now we just have to pull the brakes off and we should be good to get these wheel hubs out of the car. With the brakes and everything off, we can get a good idea of just how bad this wheel bearing is. So like, look at the play on this. Definitely not supposed to be like that. <laughs> so let's pull these wheel hubs off. That way we can get them ready to go to a shop to get the bearings pressed out. With the axles out of the way, now we have access to these four bolts that bolt the wheel hub onto the knuckle. So I actually already broke those loose, so I'm just gonna get them out and then the whole wheel hub will come off the car. Success, they're out of the car. Now I just gotta call around and find a local shop that can press the bearings out and put some new ones in for me. Three days later. And we're back. We got the wheel hubs taken care of. Thankfully, a local shop was able to press the old ones out and these new ones back on. So we're looking good there. For the wheel bearings, I went with Moog as well. Here is the part number if you need it. <clears throat> also, sorry if my voice sounds a little weird. I feel totally fine. I just woke up with like half my voice missing. So we're just going to roll with it. But since we got the wheel bearings taken care of, I want to fix the most annoying problem with the Z, which is not having a parking brake. I had mentioned it at the end of the last video. It's just so annoying not being able to park and like keep the car running. You have to park it in gear or like if you turn full lock, it'll usually stop it from rolling because it has so much angle, but it would be really nice to have a parking brake and it would be kind of nice to have one to like save myself in different drift situations or like drifting in the rain, it does come in handy. So we got to get the parking brake bits back on the car, but let me show you what we're working with here. So this is what it should look like. See the brake shoes, this whole assembly is where the cable comes in and actually operates it. So this side's good to go, I just need to replace the shoes. This side is not looking so hot. So when I took this off the car last time, I had no idea what I was doing and I took this one apart in a million different pieces. And then I learned on the other side that you can just remove one thing and take it all off as one. So. I'm gonna use the one that's together to kind of put this other one back together and hopefully get them on the car.
All right, we got this one together. It actually went together pretty easily once I kind of understood how things work. I'm glad it was a part because this adjuster here, which adjusts the space between the shoes, was actually seized. I had a real issue with that on the car. It's one of the reasons I had to take everything apart. So once I took it off, I was able to get it unseized and now it spins. Um, you can see that. So that's how it adjusts the distance between the shoes here. Now I just have to swap out the shoes on this one. So this job's super simple. If this was on the car, it would be even easier. Um, let me kind of prop this up and I will go through how to change the e-brake shoes because it's a pretty simple job and it will definitely make the Z a bit better as a drift car as well as just a regular daily. All right, hopefully you can see what we're working with here. But the first thing we have to do is these little Phillips heads. You can see they have a green mark on them indicating that's where they should be. So they're spring loaded. If we press down on them and then give it just a quarter turn, they'll actually come out. And that's what holds our shoe onto this assembly. You can see this one's totally loose now. Be careful, these springs are under tension. Do the same on the other side. So just press down on the spring, quarter turn, and then it should lift right up. Set that aside. Take the whole assembly off. So because these springs are under tension, this is kind of the hard part. Um, they make a special tool for like getting this spring out, which I don't have. So we're just gonna use a flathead. I'm gonna get the flathead under the spring. And then I'm gonna kind of shimmy the flathead further back. And now I should be able to just rotate it up and then pull the spring right out. With the spring out, we can separate the shoes. I still have to get this top spring out, but just like that, I'm just gonna repeat the process up on the top. All right, we're all taken apart. So smaller of the two channels is gonna go on the bottom of the car. We'll set these in place and we're gonna get our little spring loaded uh, flat heads and put those right back in so we can get these shoes held into place. Just press down, quarter turn, and then they lock right into place. All right, now I probably should have put this adjuster thing and the actual e-brake cable mechanism uh, in before I tighten these down, but you can see there's still plenty of movement here, so it's not that hard just to slip these in. All right, now comes the fun part of putting our springs in. So you'll notice there's two completely different springs. This one with kind of a channel cut into it goes on the bottom because it's uh, the channel goes around the this e-brake cable mechanism thing. So there's no real easy way to do this unless you have one of those fancy tools, which I don't have. So I'm just gonna hook one side in. I'm using some needle nose pliers and there's actually a tab on the shoe here that I'm gonna put the pliers on, put the other half of the pliers in the spring and use that to kind of clamp it to get it into the right spot. There we go. Definitely gonna take a little bit of fussing around, but once you figure out the best method to get it in there, you can just kind of pop these springs in. This lower one is not under nearly as much tension, so it's a little bit easier to get in. And just like that, we have two fully assembled e-brake assemblies, I guess you'd call them, with brand new shoes. Now we just gotta get these on the car. So before I jump into getting the e-brake back together, there's actually one more thing I almost forgot about. So this is two pieces in one, right? It's the dust shield, which is kind of the outer circle. And then the inner circle is where the e-brake bit actually attaches to. Now, if we go over to the car, our awesome Part Shop Max drop knuckles have the ability to run dual calipers so that we can run a hydro in the future. Now I want to use this ability and yes, I could just throw this whole thing on and then maybe cut out a corner of it later. Like this corner is cut out for the factory caliper. It goes like that. But what I would really like to do is lose the dust shield entirely and just keep this inner circle. Now looking in here, you'll actually notice that there are spot welds right there, right there, right there, and a few other along the perimeter. So I'm hoping if I drill those out, I can take this entire dust shield off and just keep this one. That way I can have a functioning e-brake and have room for dual calipers. Success. So we got this inner part off, just drilled a few holes through the spot welds, and now we can throw that crusty old dust shield away. So I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on there just so these holes I drilled aren't bare metal. Put the parking brake shoes back on and then we'll be able to put this on the car.
Right, so we've got the assembly all together and on the car. Next step is to actually hook up the parking brake. So we are going to put the parking brake cable back on. Now, if you were just replacing the shoes, this would still be connected and you wouldn't have to deal with any of this mess like I did. But I figure if any of you guys are dumb enough to do what I did and take this parking brake cable off, you see it just feeds through right there. And then uh, somehow or another, it hooks, it hooks up to that. Um, I'm going to figure this out and I will pick the camera back up, hopefully with some words of wisdom, not words of frustration. <laughs> All right, we got it. So you can see the cable runs through there and then it attaches to this guy right here. You can see as this gets pulled in, it separates the shoes. So imagine that being pulled in is the cable being pulled from the car that way. And it works. It's just a little pin that drops in through this mechanism that we put together and into the actual cable. Uh, and then it just kind of hangs out in there. Like I said, the smartest thing to do is just never take any of this apart. If you're replacing the shoes, you just have to pull the springs off and these little screws and that's it. Don't get into the whole mess I did by removing everything. There's no need to do that. Next, I just got to toss the wheel bearing on and the rotor and this will be done. All right, so we've got our hub all bolted on and everything is good on the back of the spindle here. Now it's time to put the brake rotor on. A little trick, I turned our adjustment screw all the way in, meaning it's as short as it could be. Don't mind the holes in my glove there. So the shoes are as close together as they can get, which will allow us to put the brake rotor back on with ease. And then what we'll do is after it's on, we'll just adjust that screw so that the shoes are about as close as they can get without it touching. Let me show you what I mean once I get this on. All right, so we've got it on. Typically, this little rubber guy would be in this hole but this hole is actually what we use to adjust that adjuster. I don't know if you can actually see it in there. You can just barely see the kind of cog on that thing. So that's peeking through, whoa, this little hole right there. So now I'm gonna turn that until the shoes just barely touch the calipers and then I'll go back just a hair. So the way I'm testing this here is I just spun that little adjuster thing maybe two or three times around and then I'm spinning the actual assembly to see if it's rubbing. Now it spins freely and rubs just a teeny bit in like one area, so that's probably good. Uh, they may The shoes may not be like perfectly centered the way I have them, but I'm confident they'll work itself out. While I had the caliper there, I just dusted it with some flat black paint. Certainly cleans up the look a whole lot. So all I have left to do on this side is put the axle in, which I'm not gonna do just yet because I do have to replace the axle boot. But other than that, this side is done. So I'm gonna turn my attention to the other side and knock that out as well. All right, we're back in the garage. My voice doesn't sound any better, but that's okay. We're still making some progress. I've got the good axle in the Z. I've got the bad axle here on the workbench. I've just got to replace this boot that is destroyed. Tried to fix it with some aluminum tape. Obviously that was a temporary fix. So started peeling that off. Um, got our new boot here. Now I did a video on this not that long ago. If you did miss that one, it is a super simple job. You just take the clamp off either side. This part of the axle will separate. Then you can slide the boot off, slide the new boot on, pack this thing full of grease, pop the new one back on, clamp it down and you're good to go. Side note, these gloves, from Amazon. Glove Works, the five mil ones. These things are amazing. Prior to those, I was using some from Harbor Freight that I think were, they were like half as thick, if not even thinner, and they would tear on everything. But I just got these from Amazon and they are so good. <laughs> Literally putting the axle on and like doing things that I just figured would tear them, they didn't even rip. So I'm gonna put a link to these down in, in the description. I did just get set up with Amazon affiliates. So if you do end up buying them with my link, it helps me out. And it would be really cool to kind of get that off the ground and rolling. So if you need some mechanics gloves, click the link and check them out. I always appreciate the support. Anyways, I'm gonna tear into this boot. That way we can get this axle in the car and get the car back on the road.
Okay, so my apologies if I said that that was an easy, straightforward job. If you're doing this yourself, it's not hard, and it actually is pretty straightforward. It's just when you first dive in and kind of get a look at what's going on, you think, dang, there's a lot of little pieces. But really, they all kind of go together in a way that makes sense. Let me show you how it looks now that it's all taken apart. This is the big piece that we had to separate from this. It houses this kind of thing. And then there's a ball in each of these slots. So I think there's six that go all the way around. And this cog is actually kind of like press fit onto here. And there's a circlip on this guy here. So how to take this apart from the beginning if you were looking at it like this. Once you get the boot out of the way, this big ring here is on the perimeter of this. So I just kind of wedged the screwdriver in there, slipped it out, and then that allows the axle shaft with this carrier to be removed from this guy. Once that's out, the little balls will fall out. You'll see I have them in here. You can kind of, kind of see them in there. I just threw them in there for safekeeping. Then you'll remove the circlip from the end of the axle shaft. This guy you can just slide up out of the way. See, it's not held on with anything once the balls are out. And then this, you can just tap off the end of the axle shaft with a hammer. I was just lightly tapping it in a circle and it slides off with ease. Now that it's off completely, I can slide the new boot on, reassemble it all in the reverse of that order, pack this thing full of grease, and then just put the clamps on. Like I said, it's not really a difficult job, but if it's your first time diving into something like this, it can be a bit overwhelming just because there are so many little pieces, like that snap ring, for instance, or circlip. When I undid it and got it off, it shot like up to the ceiling. <laughs> and that's an easy way to think, oh, dang, that's not good. Thankfully, it was just on the floor next to me, but I'm telling you now, this is not a very hard job. These axle boots cost like 10 or 12 bucks and it's such an easy fix and it will make your axles last so much longer. If you have a torn axle boot, don't put it off. Buy a new boot for 12 bucks. Do this dirty but pretty simple job and your axles will live on for many drifts to come. <laughs> All right, got our freshly rebuilt axle in, got the cotter pin in, bolts torqued down. Good to go. Car is back on the ground. Everything is together, looking good. The only thing left to do is go test it out, make sure it feels good, and to see if that e-brake actually works. parking brake it works to park and it works to do little drifts it's definitely in kind of a weird spot uh, when it comes to drifting it's uh, really close to like me I have to be really tight on it which is kind of funny because I feel like my seat is further back than most Z drivers but the parking brake still like pretty far back so it's a little awkward but I wasn't planning on using it to drift a bunch with but it's definitely nice to have to kind of save a drift or like extend it or especially when it's raining but really to park, that's the main reason I needed it. <laughs> now I could keep the car in neutral running and just put the parking brake up, you know, like a normal car. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed those little in-car clips. Unfortunately, I didn't have anybody to help me film so I couldn't get anything out of car. I was hoping for like a sick e-brake slide. <laughs> but either way, super happy that it works. That was such an annoying issue. Even when the parking brake was like in the car and the car was, you know, untouched in the back, it never worked well. Like pulled all the way up it barely did anything so to have brand new shoes and to have them adjusted just right it definitely makes it super easy i don't know if you could tell in that little u-turn i did that barely took any force so if your parking brake sucks in your 350z i would suggest replacing the shoes and getting them adjusted just right and i guarantee you it's going to feel a whole lot better anyways that is going to be a wrap on this one i hope you guys enjoyed it 
Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe if you're not already. And as always, I will catch you in the next one.